Hello everyone and uh, welcome back. Uh, we are going to uh, get into the first uh, laboratory uh, session of this course today and uh, we are going to talk about uh, preparation of geologic sections from uh, geologic maps in this particular uh, laboratory. Uh, we have already looked at the uh, salient features of geologic maps and geologic sections earlier in one of the theoretical uh, le uh, lessons. Uh, today we are going to have a practical demonstration uh, on, this, uh, on, on, on this business of uh, preparation of uh, geologic sections. Uh, I will also take this opportunity of uh, wrapping up the uh, question set of the previous lesson uh, before we begin with the preparation of geologic sections. Uh, th this is the question set of the previous lesson. The first question that was asked uh, was whether the following statements are true or false. Uh, the first statement was swelling soils are found only in desert. Uh, this is more often than not is true. However, swelling soils are also found in non-desert environment. Uh, particularly in fine grained soils where there is a lot of smectite minerals present. Uh, swelling soils could also be present in situations where, uh, where there are a lot of clay minerals between, uh, between rock joints. Uh, in such situations also there could be a lot of uh, potential for swelling in the shallow layers. Uh, near the ground surface and these these settings these geologic settings are not necessarily uh, found in desert they are also found in other uh, uh, hydrometeorologic environments the second statement that was given was collapsible soils are un are usually dry this statement is true uh, because uh, collapsible soils are usually uh, found in situations where the natural moisture content is uh, relatively low and uh, the soils exist in a in a moist to dry state uh, this type of soil typically uh, comprise of situations where we have got weak cementation bond uh, because of deposition or accretion of different types of uh, chemicals at the interparticle contacts and these uh, cementitious uh, accretions they tend to get destroyed very easily if the soil is disturbed a little bit and as a result the soil leads to uh, volumetric collapse if you recall from what we have uh, discussed earlier in the previous uh, lesson and earlier in this particular course. The second question that I asked was can a clay silt soil of high plasticity be classified as collapsible soil? If you recall the subject matter of previous lesson then you will see that uh, typically uh, collapsible uh, uh, typically collapsible soils are not uh, cannot, are generally are usually not classified as highly plastic uh, uh, fine grained soils and they are typically in the low plasticity uh, regime. Then let us move on to the third question. Can a soil with high swell potential be classified as CH? This is, uh, this is a possibility, this is indeed a possibility. Uh, highly plastic soils comprising a lot of active clay minerals such as uh, smectite can be uh, they, they, they form a very large chunk of, uh, of uh, swelling uh, so soils with high soil potential so C CH or clay with high plasticity can indeed be a uh, likelihood of, uh, of the classification of a swelling fine grained soil. Uh, then moving on to the next question, explain the following terms sinkhole and trough. 
If you recall what from what we discussed in the previous lesson, sinkhole is a situation where a soluble uh, channel forms at some depth uh, near the surface within uh, within a within a volume of soluble rock such as uh, such as uh, poorly compacted limestone. In such situations, uh, if a cavern forms very near to the ground surface, the uh, overburden above the cavern cannot sustain, it, it, it is unstable, it cannot sustain its own weight or the structure that is supported on such, uh, uh, such uh, covering above the uh, cavern and as a result the, uh, the overburden usually collapses into the cavern as a result sinkholes develop. Trough on the other hand is a little bit widespread phenomenon where uh, the, the sinking or subsidence occurs over a relatively wider uh, uh, distance scale at the surface of the uh, at the surface of the site and this occurs primarily as a result of the collapse of a large aerial extent of underground uh, openings such as mine workings and as a result the uh, the uh, the relative movement or relative settlement within the within the inner portions of the trough is relatively small on the other hand near the margins of the tr trough the relative settlement relative subsidence or the uh, vertical displacement expressed as a as a proportion of the horizontal distance from a uh, benchmark is quite large uh, only near the margins not near the near the middle portion of a trough. Okay, finally the last question list the typical uh, mitigation measures against subsidence hazard we discussed about a uh, we gave a list of a number of possible mitigation measures. Uh, this could be avoidance of the hazard, identification of the areas that have uh, a potential for subsidence and avoiding those areas for development then uh, there could be structural measures such as filling up of the unstable caverns using uh, inert fills or using grouting. Uh, so there, there were several measures that we uh, talked about in the previous lesson uh, when, uh, when we were considering uh, mitigation of subsidence hazard. Okay, now uh, let's move on to the subject matter of today's laboratory demonstration. Uh, what we are going to do, we are going to take a couple of uh, geologic maps uh, in this particular lesson and we will be trying to form uh, or, or prepare the geologic uh, sections uh, along two of the, two of the uh, uh, transects along these, uh, across these two geologic maps. Now, uh, what we are going to do one of the sev uh, we are going to follow one of the several methods that are used in uh, in uh, draw in preparing geologic sections and this part this type this uh, particular procedure is going to be based on uh, on uh, strike lines so we begin with looking at the uh, definition of a strike line uh, strike line is essentially a straight line joining the intersection between the line on a geologic map separating two outcrops of uh, uh, separating the outcrops of two different geologic units and the topographic contour of the same elevation. Okay, just look at that uh, definition and uh, that will become uh, more clear when I uh, take uh, take the example of the geologic maps that we are going to consider a uh, little bit later. Uh, this definition is for your records. Now let's move on to the geologic map, the first one. So this is the geologic map. All the different geologic units are labeled on this particular map. Uh, we are going to hand draw the geologic sections along the thick uh, dash dot uh, line drawn in blue from the uh, from the left top near the left top corner from near the left top corner of this particular map to near the uh, bottom right corner of this map uh, and actually 
before we get into drawing the sections, let me first explain what I meant by uh, strike lines. So we just uh, consider the two points uh, which are marked over there by two uh, uh, circular symbols uh, separating uh, units, geologic unit C and geologic unit D. These two uh, points, both of them, they are at an elevation of 500 meter as is evident from the intersection uh, of the, of the uh, line separating geologic sections C and D and the 500 uh, meter topographic contour. So we first mark such points that are available on the geologic map and then we draw a line connecting each one of these pairs of points and these lines are called strike lines and we are going to make extensive use of strike lines uh, particularly the intersection of the strike line and the line along which we are trying to draw the section uh, as you will see in the next little bit. So this is the definition of uh, or this is the example of a strike line. Now let me also put up the second geologic map that we are going to consider. Here the section that we are going to draw will be for the uh, dash dot line which is uh, uh, which actually comes exactly almost exactly from the uh, top left corner of the map to the bottom right corner of the map and in this case uh, let me show you a uh, strike line so here we have got these two points which are again at 500 uh, meter topography contour and they are on the uh, separation between uh, the outcrops of uh, geologic uh, unit D and geologic unit E uh, and again as we did before we just connect these two points to construct the uh, strike line. Now the difference, the, the, uh, this particular example is uh, different essentially from the previous example in that in here we are going to consider a non-conformal contact uh, which is shown by a thick orange line and I am going to highlight this particular line uh, here. Uh, this is the line that denotes a fault and we are going to see how we handle a fault contact uh, in this particular example. Okay, let me. So this is the fault that we are going to see when we look at this particular example. Okay, now before I move on with today's uh, demonstration, let me let me. Uh, note down, let me actually, uh, let me uh, formalize the steps that are going to be involved in the drawing here. And this is for your records, it will not be very evident, but it will, uh, these steps will become clear when we, when we start hand drawing the sections. So what we are going to do, we are going to start with the geologic map and this map should include the topographic contours as well as the lines along which the sections are to be drawn. Then uh, the, in the first step we are going to draw a baseline above and parallel to the section line. This is going to be uh, go going to correspond an elevation which is lower than the lowest elevation encountered along the section line. Then we are going to project the intersections of the topographic contours and the section line up to the baseline. Then we are going to scale off the elevation differences between the baseline elevation and the elevation of the topographic contour perpendicular to the baseline to mark the points along the surface profile. Connect these points to mark the surface profile. Then we are going to project the intersections of the strike lines which I uh, illustrated a little bit uh, before for contacts between 
all pairs of geologic units possible upward to the baseline, scale off the elevations of the differences between the baseline elevation and the elevation of the strike line perpendicular to the baseline, connect these points to mark the profile of the contacts between the pairs of geologic units. And then mark the locations of non-formal contacts, non-conformal contacts such as faults and dikes if any and show their depth if available from supplementary data. Now uh, these are just a few statements, the, this slide as well as the previous two slides, these actually give you a synopsis of what is going to happen in the next little bit uh, when we start drawing the uh, geologic uh, sections. So now I am going to also show you the result that we are going to get. So this is the first example that we are going to consider and here I have rotated the map in fact so that the uh, section becomes horizontal actually on this particular slide and the section geologic section that was that is going to be prepared from this particular drawing is shown up above of the geologic uh, map so this one here uh, this this one here is the uh, is the plan or geologic map section of the geologic map and up above is the geologic section that we are going to draw in this uh, demonstration, the geologic section. So this is the first example. Then in the second example, we have this uh, geologic map, the one that is shown at the bottom. So this is our geologic map of the second example and the section is shown up above. This is the geologic section that we are going to prepare in the next little bit. Okay, so with that I am going to, uh, I'm going to wrap up the uh, presentation part uh, that uh, comes really as a preamble to what we are going to do next. Uh, and just now um, we are going to start drawing the geologic sections you just uh, uh, hang on with us you just uh, keep watching what is going on I'm going to keep explaining what goes on during the preparation of the geologic sections as it happens so uh, we are going to wrap up the first part of this uh, presentation with this okay uh, so here is the uh, here is the drawing here is the uh, uh, geologic map that you have already seen. Uh, what we have done in order to save a little bit of time, we have already drawn the uh, the strike lines and we will begin with labeling the strike lines in order to let you understand what was done before. So for example, the strike line uh, on the left here, which I am going to label, it connects the interface between B and C at elevation uh, 400. So let's label this one as 400 BC. Then you can tell what is the next one. The next one actually connects again the interface between B and C, but that is at an elevation of uh, 500 meters. So this one is going to be labeled as 500 BC. Then moving on to the right, uh, the next one up uh, is the interface again between B and C uh, and that one is at elevation 600. So we are going to label this particular uh, strike line as 600 BC. And then uh, we move on to the interface between uh, units C and unit, uh, unit C and D. So here the first one is uh, the strike line at elevation 400. So we are going to mark that one as 400 CD. 
then uh, moving on uh, the next point on the interface between C and D is the uh, is the strike line at elevation 500 so that's going to be 500 C D uh, further to the right is 600 C D Uh, then we move on to the interface between uh, unit E and unit D. Uh, so here the first uh, strike line is at elevation uh, 600. So this one is going to be 600 D E. Uh, next one, uh, what we have done here uh, uh, for the next one is uh, uh, that is actually the interface between uh, between D and F, unit D and unit F. Uh, the strike line is at elevation 400. So accordingly, we are going to write that one as 400 D F. Uh, then further down to the right is uh, again back to the interface between uh, between unit E and uh, unit D so for this one actually what we have done is to interpolate uh, between uh, between uh, con uh, contours of 500 and 600 meter elevations uh, to obtain a subsidiary point at 550 meter elevation so accordingly this particular uh, strike line is 550 uh, DE next one up is the interface again between D and F this uh, strike line represents elevation 500 so we have got 500 D F then a little bit uh, to the uh, to further to the right is the interface between units uh, E and G and this particular uh, uh, this particular uh, strike line represents elevation 600 so this one here is going to be labeled 600 Uh, 600 EG and then the last one here is again between interface uh, of unit E and G and for this one again we have interpolated between elevation 600 and 500 uh, so this one again is going to be uh, noted as 550 like the earlier interpolated uh, contour it is going to be noted as 550 uh, EG so that is uh, that's all about the strike line so now let's move on to the preparation of uh, topographic uh, surface so for that we are going to use a tracing sheet like this one uh, which is marked with uh, which is a graphical tracing sheet really so what we are going to do we are going to club this one on with the with the uh, topo with the uh, uh, with the map like this so that the uh, graphical markings they are parallel to each other they are parallel to the section uh, parallel to the section just paste it and now we proceed with the drawing first of the uh, of the surface of this particular uh, section 
so let me position this map a little bit so our baseline here is going to be along the section line itself and since the minimum elevation that we encountered along the section line was uh, 300 meter uh, within the main body of the, geolo of the uh, geologic map so let's consider this particular baseline to be at an elevation of uh, 200 meter and then we are going to use a scale of uh, uh, 10 millimeter equal to 100 meter in the vertical direction and in the horizontal direction we are going to use a scale of uh, 10 millimeter equal to 250 millimeter that is going to give us a little bit of exaggeration in the vertical direction and topography in order to enhance the topographic features a little bit so you should realize that in the vertical direction we are going to use a scale like this so this one here is going to be uh, in our case 200 meter and in the horizontal direction we are going to similarly have uh, this much of distance equal to 500 meter so these are the scales that we are going to use uh, in this particular section so this one here is horizontal and this one here is vertical all right so this here as we have mentioned the baseline itself represents 200 meter so we are going to base our construction accordingly all right so let's now begin by marking the locations of the topographic contour so first intersection uh, of the topographic contour is uh, is at the corner at the area which is a little bit outside of the range of the of the camera so let's begin with the intersection uh, between the uh, between the uh, section line in the geologic map and the topographic contour topographic contour at elevation 400 so that is this particular point here so 400 then is going to be uh, uh, as far as as far as our uh, our uh, scale is concerned it is going to be at an elevation of uh, uh, at, at, at a distance at a vertical distance vertical offset of 20 centimeter according to the scale that I've drawn so that is going to be the point on the uh, surface there the next one up is the 500 contour and 500 contour is it intersects the uh, the section line and the baseline at this location here so we are going to project that one upward 30 centimeter and accordingly we are going to have a point on the surface out here uh, actually let me uh, yeah that's right it is going to be it is going to be right about there okay then next one next intersection between topographic contour and the base and the baseline as well as the section line is out here and this one is uh, for the, uh, this one represents the contour at 600 meter elevation so that one is going to be uh, going to be at this location on the section line uh, going further to the right 600 meter elevation contour again cuts the section line and the baseline at this location so we project that point up to obtain another point on the surface at this location uh, 
then we get to the topographic contour of 500 meter elevation and that is at this location projected up just like uh, what we were doing before and we get a point out here again we get a uh, get an intersection with between the section line and topographic contour 500 at this location project it up and we get another point here and uh, finally we may consider the ext the interpolated uh, contour of 550 which approximately cuts the topographic contour at this location and thereby we are going to get a point which is going to be approximately at this location so that's then we are going to join these uh, these lines these points to obtain the surface profile by a smooth line actually to obtain a surface profile like this and that is going to be uh, going to be our our surface uh, that is going to how the surface is going to look like of this particular uh, area on the uh, section drawing all right now let's mark up the outcrops uh, which are going to appear on the uh, on the section so what we are seeing here is that up to here we are going to see uh, we are actually intersecting we are transecting unit B so unit B is going to continue all the way from left on this section to this point here then we get a little bit into unit C and project the area or the length of the section line which is uh, covered by unit C and we get Uh, we get to there so this part here is going to be unit C and after that we move on into unit uh, E and we are we remain in unit E until we reach this point so from here to here we are going to get we are going to see exposure of unit E at surface then we get a little bit of unit uh, uh, which unit is this uh, that one is unit F so we are going to see a little bit of unit F up to this point at the saddle portion of this topography so this is unit F and finally we get into uh, finally we get into unit E okay so those are the those are the outcrops uh, that are going to be visible at the surface now let's start uh, projecting upward the intersection between the strike lines and the section line so what we are going to get uh, the first one is 400 BC so that is the intersection between units B and unit C and it is at an elevation of 400 so that is at this location here so that one there is going to be right near the surface so this particular point we are going to mark again as 400 BC so that is going to give us the interface between uh, units B and unit C and that is at an elevation of 400 so then since it is such a uh, such a thin layer we are just going to uh, 
actually we have got other points of uh, of intersection of uh, the interface between BC. We have got another point here, which is at 500 meter elevation. So we move up uh, to here, approximately, and that is going to give us 500 BC. And in fact. Uh, in fact, we have got one more, and that is at 600 meter elevation, and that is uh, almost near the uh, almost near the uh, no. That is that is between C and D. Sorry, uh, we are going to just connect the interface, the outcrop, uh, uh, the the uh, the line separating the outcrops of B and C between these two. Uh, elevation these two projections of the uh, of the strike lines and that is going to give us the interface between units uh, between units B and C so unit B is going to be at the top and unit C is going to be underneath that Okay, so so this is going to be the shape of uh, shape of unit. So this is going to be the this is going to be unit B, the one that I'm hatching right now, the thin one, thin veneer. And underneath that, we are going to get unit C. So let's uh, now delineate the bottom of unit C. So let's look at the interface between uh, unit C and D. So in order to do that, we are going to follow exact same procedure. Now we are going to uh, project the strike lines that represent the interface between unit C and D upward. So let's uh, start doing that. So the first strike line that represents the interface between unit C and D is this one here this one that is the intersection between the strike line and the baseline as well as the section line so this particular let's project this particular point up and this is the uh, this is the point corresponding to 400 meter elevation so we are going to go uh, up to here and that is going to give us a point uh, at the interface between C and D and at 400 meter elevation so we are going to mark that one as 400 CD and then we move on to the other uh, point representing the interface between C and D and that is the strike line that is the location of the strike line where it inter intersects the section line as well as the baseline in this case this represents uh, elevation 500 so project that one up to 500 meter elevation uh, and we come to a point which gives us the interface between units C and D at 500 meter elevation so that is going to be 500 CD uh, then we have got another point which represents 600 meter elevation at the interface between C and D and that is the point where it cuts the uh, where the strike line corresponding to this elevation cuts the uh, section line as well as the strike as well as the uh, baseline so that is at elevation 600 so this is going to be uh, 600 CD it's becoming a little bit busy now with so many points appearing on the section uh, and I think that is the last one on the interface between C and D. Uh, so we are going to join those three points and what we get is a line like this one and below that is going to be unit C and above that is going to be unit D. Now you will ask what is going to happen to this particular line. We are not going to project this line all the way to the surface in this particular case because 
along the section line unit uh, D is not going to be visible and it is going to be covered actually if you see the geologic map then it is going to be covered by a thin veneer of unit E. So this particular line which separates unit C and D is not going to uh, not going to move on to touch the surface uh, and it is going to intersect the interface between uh, between D and E uh, instead. So now what should what should we do? We are going to start marking up in a similar manner the interface between uh, the the uh, the profile of the interface uh, between D and E. So this is the this is the uh, strike line intersection for elevation 600 and the uh, and the section line so project that one up to 600 meter elevation so we come to this point and this is going to be 600 de so in fact that is going to demarcate if you re if you uh, if you realize that is going to demarcate the top surface of the uh, of unit D. Okay, now let's move on to the next uh, to the next uh, strike line, demarcating the intersection uh, or the interface between D and E, and that is this one here. This represents uh, the interpolated contour of 550. So let's uh, project it up to 550 and we come to a point which is roughly here. So that is where we are going to get 550 DE. So this one is going to give us 550 DE. Interface between D and E at elevation 550. So let's connect that one also. So that is uh, going to uh, demarcate the uh, top of unit D. And we can actually project this particular line backward because we know that uh, unit E starts from this location because that is the interface, that is the limit of the outcrop of E and we also know that the outcrop of E ends at that point so we can connect those two points and above this particular uh, this particular line is going to be unit E let's label this one up so that it is visible so this one here is going to be unit E. That is how unit E is going to look on the section. Okay, now back to uh, back to the other interface uh, the the uh, the other interfaces. Now we have got uh, we are going to get another one to the right, further right, and that is going to be between uh, between E and G so let's uh, let's consider those strike lines so this is the strike line at 600 meter elevation between E and G uh, between E and G and project this one up to 600 so that is going to be the point where E and G is going to uh, going to be uh, going to be separated. So th this is this is going to be 600 E G, and we have got another point uh, further right that is going to be at 500 E G, and that particular point is going to be uh, further to to the extreme right of this particular section and if we join that then we are going to 
come up with the profile of the interface between E and G. Above this particular interface will be uh, will be uh, will be E. So this one uh, marked by hatch marked by green hatching is going to be unit E, and underneath that is going to be unit uh, uh, underneath that is going to be unit G. All right. Now let's uh, let's go back and see whether we can get any more information from this particular okay let's uh, let's first actually uh, cross hatch the uh, the uh, the unit uh, unit unit c by green uh, so i'm going to use green in this particular case so this is going to be our unit c it's going to look like this so that is our c uh, b is out here uh, e is back there and f is uh, actually unit g is to the right g uh, no this is actually unit e sorry this one is unit e and underneath that is going to be unit uh, underneath this one is going to be let me have a look what do we no one okay underneath that one underneath g uh, uh, sorry this one is going to be g this one is going to be g and underneath g is going to be unit e so that's how it works so uh, further actually uh, this is going to be g i think uh, this one here uh, i marked it i labeled it in a wrong manner is it uh, this one here is going to be which unit is this f and then uh, we are getting back into uh, getting back into unit e sorry so that's how it is going to be so we are going to get a little bit of unit e uh, little bit of unit e further to the right so this is going to be our unit e and that is uh, not unit g so this is going to be unit e so unit e is going to be here and here so these are the units that we are looking for. So this one is unit E. Okay. So unit E was was near the middle, near the middle of the uh, section, and as well as uh, further to the right of this particular section. All right. Now we also will get we also will get another uh, another and uh, we could actually get another strike line if we interpolate some of the uh, topographic contours for the uh, for the interface between uh, between the uh, between actually unit f and underneath f is uh, the major unit here is uh, at the top of f actually so we are going to get uh, we oh okay we have got we have got a few more strike lines actually we have got the uh, strike line here which we missed which separates the uh, units d and f and this one was at elevation 500 so let's draw this one so that is going to be one two three this one here so that is 500 d f so that is that demarcates the top of unit f and we just do not have any oh, oh we have got another uh, interface another strike line 
corresponding to uh, to uh, corresponding to the interface between D and F and that is this one this is at elevation 400 so we come to a point here so that is going to give us the interface between units D and F so above this one is going to be unit D and underneath this one is going to be unit F so this one is going to be our unit D and underneath this one is going to be unit F okay so that kind of uh, completes the uh, section whatever information we could get for the example that we considered uh, to begin with and now let's move on to the next uh, example so here again we have marked the section lines uh, the strike lines and again you have to find out the uh, you have to actually label the strike lines and uh, project the strike lines up to the appropriate values uh, to demarcate the interfaces between units C and D in this case because the strike lines that are bunching here they represent the interface between units C and D and the strike lines that bunch out here they represent the interfaces between uh, units D and E so you have to appropriately label the strike lines find out the intersection of the strike lines and project it upward to appropriate uh, elevation uh, similarly here you have got the strike lines giving the demarcation between uh, out between units E and F and finally uh, what we got here are a couple of strike lines obtained after interpolating the available topography contours and that gives us the interface between F and G so we follow the exact same procedure as I explained uh, in the preceding and what we are going to get in the process by doing the uh, necessary exercise is uh, is to construct a section like this one and what you can see here is that the available information is rather tenuous uh, so that uh, we could actually draw the sections only uh, only to little bit uh, limited depth in this particular case so let's uh, mark the uh, units anyway on this particular uh, uh, section so this one is unit A and after that we got into unit B and then uh, this one is unit C and D and E F and G and then we hit the fault line we consider we we hit the fault line and finally on the other side of the fault line we get back into F now you notice here that we have drawn the fault line in a vertical manner because that is going to be most probably the case because in this particular section the fault line actually follows a straight it, it follows a straight geometry in plan and if that happens then more often than not the fault line actually dips very steeply as a result we assume that the fault line in this particular case is vertical but in general in order to resolve the dip of the fault you you need the uh, you need you need actually some additional subsurface boring information uh, in order to confirm the inferred dip of the fault line so this gives you some idea actually above the geologic uh, map uh, preparation and I left 
the large part of the second example for your practice so you try to use this as a uh, as a uh, as an exercise and try to get uh, i gave you the solution as well so you try to complete the uh, the uh, section at your own leisure and try to see whether your solution matches what is provided on this particular uh, example here okay uh, thank you very much uh, until we meet the next time and that is going to be an outdoor uh, session uh, where we are going to demonstrate the uh, laboratory procedures and some of the field procedures for characterizing soil and rock samples okay until then thank you and uh, bye bye Here we are going to give the uh, demonstrations on uh, different uh, uh, simple laboratory testing for classification and uh, identification of key uh, soil parameters uh, and rock parameters. Uh, so with that said, we are going to move on to the first uh, laboratory experiment involving uh, sieve analysis which is carried out to find out what is the distribution of grain size uh, or uh, representation of different grain sizes within the soil matrix uh, for coarse grain soils. Uh, these are the IS uh, standard sieves used for uh, finding out the grain size distribution as I was uh, saying before for coarse grain soils. Uh, what we have got here is a stack of uh, different standard sieves uh, which has got different opening sizes mentioned on the uh, mentioned on the uh, on the labels here and you can see the opening of individual uh, sieve from this uh, uh, coarsest sieve that is shown that is being shown now and we can show now what is the uh, what is the uh, appearance of the finest sieve uh, used for finding out the uh, the uh, uh, grain, grain size uh, using sieve analysis this is the uh, 75 micron opening size sieve whereas the first one that you saw was uh, for uh, it had an opening size of uh, 4.75 uh, millimeter as is mentioned on the label and now you can get the idea and you look at the labels of different uh, uh, standard sieves and you can see that it actually goes down in size from the top starting from the top or or the coarsest uh, sieve is at the top and the finest sieve size is at the bottom and at the bottom of the 75 micron sieve is a pan which will collect all those soils, all those particles which are finer than uh, 75 micron. 